So today we're going to have a look at creating brushes in Photoshop. You can use this to create your own permanent watermark that you can use again and again or a logo on a photograph. It could just be a simple shape that you'd like to be able to recreate and use in an artistic fashion. So let's get started. So what do we need to get started with creating a brush in Photoshop? Well, it, it's actually pretty simple. Let's start off by going to File and New. And all we're going to do is just start off with a completely blank document. Um, we're going to start off with a simple A4 document. You can do this as to whatever size that you prefer. But we're going to start off with a simple sheet here. Now, in this instance, what we're actually going to try and do is create a, a logo or just really our name in effect. That's something we can, can then use and turn into a brush and we can put on photographs again and again and again. It's a really quick and simple way of adding a watermark. You can certainly do this uh, automated through uh, Lightroom, but if you prefer to use Photoshop, Photoshop, this is just one quick way of doing it. Plus this little idea, this kind of how to creating a brush is something you can then expand and add to lots of different elements. It doesn't just have to be to uh, Photoshop's watermarks and, and it doesn't just have to be for watermarks or logos for photographs, but it is very relevant for photographers. So let's start off by adding some text. So we're going to start off with a new layer, which we can either use in the bottom of the layers panel or alternatively, we can just go up to our top toolbar, go layer, new layer. So let's just add that in there and we'll type in text. Now we can use our text tool and simply just draw out a text box on the screen. Now it's up to you as to what you want to write in there. This is simply can be your name, your photography company. So let's just write iPhotography. Now it's always good to be able to make your potential brush as big as possible. And then this will then translate to what size of brush you can then use. You can still scale it, but obviously the bigger you have it, then it gives you a little bit more latitude that when you downsize it, it still keeps its quality. If you make the brush initially quite small and then trying to upscale it, it's the same as upscaling a photograph. You're going to start to stretch the pixels that it's natively created at. So it's always best to try and make it as large as possible. So in this instance, I'm just going to adjust some of the kerneling on the text here. Just make sure it's nice and even. I may actually change the weight of the font there. And I think actually I may even change it to be more capitalized. You have options in the top toolbar here if you're playing around with text to change the character types. Now this little character panel here allows you again to change the size, the spacings, the letter spacings, the line spacings, the actual uh, height of the text itself, um, and a few other options in terms of um, adding boldness, italics, or even capitalizing it as it is here. So we're just going to make our text a little bit smaller, just so it all fits on one line together. Okay, so now we've got our text and this is what's going to form our brush. Now simply all we'll need to do using our layers panel is just to make sure we rasterize this text. Now you don't necessarily have to do this with images if you're converting an image or part of an image or a shape uh, into a brush. You don't necessarily have to do that um, with those types of, uh, of images, but certainly with text, it is important to rasterize it first to make it editable. So we just right click on the layer, press rasterize type, and now it's all good to go. So what we need to do now is head up to our toolbar at the top. We're gonna to go to edit, and further down here, about two thirds of the way down, we have an option of define brush preset. And this is what's gonna help us create our brush. Now it gives it a default name, but we can change it ourselves. So let's just change it to iPhotography brush. And now it tells you at the bottom here as to how big the uh, brush is going to be available. This is this is mentioned in pixels. So it's almost 3000 pixels, which is a pretty wide uh, brush itself. So we can make it smaller. We can still make it a little bit larger. Not that we're probably going to have many projects to do that on, but that still is a, a very substantial size brush. So when you're happy anyway, you can simply press OK. And as you can see now straight away, it defaults. And we're using the brush tool over here on our right on our left hand side tool panel. And we can simply now just recreate that brush as many times over as we want. We can then even go back. We can change the color of it as well and we can use it again. You can either right click and just reduce the size of the brush so we can make it really small. We can make it a little bit larger than it was created. And then if we go back, Let's make it a little bit larger so you can see. And you'll be able to see how this brush is very, very useful for putting on photographs. If we actually bring a photograph up 
And now make sure in terms of what you want to color the brush that you've actually got your color swatches set here correctly. So our image itself is a little bit light at the top. It's a bit darker at the bottom. So considering that, I probably want to actually put our logo in the bottom right or left hand corner. I think I'm just going to switch it to white in this instance. And again, it's just now a case of making sure your brush tool is selected, just making your brush the right type of size and then you can press it in there and straight away you can save your image and that will be permanently embedded onto your photograph. So that's just a really, really quick way of being able to create a brush and then use it for the logo purposes for a photographer. Now, if you want to switch between brushes, you've always got the option as long as you've got your brush tool selected on the vertical toolbar, you can go back up to the main menu panel at the top here and the and your drop down will give you access to all the different types of brushes that you have in your inventory. If you're only open Photoshop for the first time, you may find you actually only have what's called general brushes, which is generally circles. Some are hard edged, some are soft edges. There may be a few other variations and creative ones that Photoshop adds in every now and again. You can purchase more online you can even download some for free but generally when you've created one of your own it'll be added automatically into this panel so it's always accessible in the future so for any reason if you go to a different one and you've been using that for a while and you want to go back it's then just a case of going back into this brush panel finding your newly created brush and then applying it to your document whenever and wherever you want as I said, this idea can be extrapolated and used lots of different ways over. In fact, we'll actually show you that now. So again, taking the same principles as to what we've done before, we're actually now going to create a brush from this photograph itself whilst it's on the screen. Now, what we actually want to try and do is use this pier here this kind of jetty area and actually create this as a brush that we can use over and over again. Now, you'll find with brushes, they don't allow you to contain lots of multiple color detail. So the information that's only going to be taken by creating a brush is just the shape of it. Um, in terms of the actual color of the brush, that's set by your swatches at the side, depending upon what color. So imagine that the brush is just the head of a, of a paintbrush itself, but the actual color and how it actually looks on your final document is set by the paint that you dip it into. So what we need to do in this instance is to make sure that our selection is as refined as possible. So I'm using the polygonal lasso tool here. And all I'm going to try and do is just select the area of this jetty, trying to be as accurate as possible. It's quite easy with it being a, a fairly kind of straight line subject. And I'm going to try and include the people on the very ends there. So now we've got that selection as it's made. And simply again, we're just going to go back to the tool that we used earlier. So that's going to edit, define brush preset. So let's just call this here. So now it's made our selection and it's made it into a brush. To see that a little bit more clearly, I think if we set up a new document, it'll probably be a little bit easier to see. So we've got our A4 document there. We'll keep our original image at the side there just so you can see how it translates. Now at the minute, currently we've got our color swatches set to white and black. Now our brush tool always selects what's on the top here. That's what it's taken from. So if we actually put a white brush on a white background, we're never gonna see it. So let's just change it to black. So now straight away, you can actually see the new brush that we've created has started up on screen here. So we can see the outline of it. So what we're going to do is just simply press onto that document and we can see now that it's taken that subject of that peer and those people at the end and created it into an individual brush on its own. As I said, it doesn't translate any color detail. So it's coming out black because we've selected black. If we were then to select red, we make it a bit smaller our image becomes red. So it becomes a little bit more stylized. It's not a simple copy and paste or a cut and paste. It is a version of that image, but a slightly more stylized one. So you do have to bear this in mind, but it can look quite quirky when you're cutting out shapes to create some sort of collage document. So there we go. There's another format as to how you can create a brush this time from elements within a photograph. Hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to check out more, keep looking out for iPhotography.com. Thanks for watching.